Welcome to Wrightsville. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the weekly online video worship service for the Wrightsville United Methodist Church in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. And we're so glad that you're joining us today for this video worship service. We hope and pray that it will be a blessing to you and also an encouragement in your spiritual life. Speaking of encouragement in your spiritual life, I have a few announcements and the first one speaks directly to that point. And that is that we have coming up uh, toward the end of, end of this month, a new member class. Now that's going to be on Saturday morning, August 28th from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. It, uh, right now we're planning to offer it in person and on Zoom. And uh, if necessary, we can go to all Zoom, but, but right now we're planning to offer it both ways. Um, so if you have been uh, worshiping with us online or in person, you're not a member of the church, we would encourage you to come and uh, find out more about the church, learn more about uh, how we do things, how we encourage Christian discipleship, and we would love to welcome you into the membership of the church. You can sign up by emailing Donna at wrightsvilleumc.org or by calling the church office or there's a bulletin board just outside the sanctuary where you can also sign up if you happen to be here in the building. Also, another announcement you've been hearing for a couple of weeks, and that is that we have some exciting new software that uh, is going to become available over in September. It's called Realm, and uh, it will help us to all be more easily connected, to keep up with what's going on in the church, the different ministries and activities, and so on and so forth. So be on the lookout for more information coming very soon. And then finally, due to the recent surge in uh, COVID cases across our state and in our county, and also because of possible exposure among some of the staff and members of the church, uh, we are returning to wearing masks for our live worship. Now, uh, this is not not totally a bad thing because you see some people look so much better when they wear a mask. For example, uh, you see my face. Which way do I look better? Right, covered with a mask. <laughs> so uh, this is for us just a basic love your neighbor uh, watching out and being careful to protect those most vulnerable amongst us. So we appreciate so much your cooperation in wearing masks when you come for live worship. And we're also, for the time being, we're going to discontinue congregational singing uh, for the same purposes. But again, this is actually has a benefit because in the Bible, in Ephesians 519, the scripture admonishes us to make melody to God in our hearts. So uh, we can still do that even without singing out loud, even though we'll, we'll certainly miss the singing and we hope to be able to return to that very soon. So those are our announcements for today. Once again, welcome to our worship service. May God bless you. Lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside I'm gonna lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Down by the riverside I ain't gonna study war no more I ain't gonna study war no more I ain't gonna study war no more 
gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. I'm gonna walk with the Prince of Peace down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I'm gonna walk with the Prince of Peace down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I ain't gonna study war no more. 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 I'm gonna shake hands around the world down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I'm gonna shake hands. Around the world, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I ain't gonna study war no more. 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 Join with me now for our opening prayer. Let us pray. Most merciful God, through Jesus Christ, you have set us free from slavery to sin that we might become your children. Help us in this worship service to sing in our hearts of your loving grace with joy, to long for your grace in our prayers, and to be assured of your grace in the proclamation of your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And we've come now to our time of morning prayer. But before we do, I want to invite you to lift up the family of Skip Ludke. Skip passed away suddenly this last week, and we certainly lift up his, his family, his wife Chris, and ask you to be in prayer for them in this difficult time. His funeral will be here at the church on August 25th at 1 o'clock, and we invite you to attend. Also, I suspect there are many of us who are gathering online today who wished to be in church on this Sunday. Unfortunately, the coronavirus has affected and exposed our staff, and so we pray for all people everywhere who have been infected and impacted by this terrible virus. Join me now in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbor and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of renewed anxiety from the coronavirus, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of your love and our love. We entrust to your tender care this day those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, that your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them. Restore, restore them to health and to strength, not just in body, but also in mind and in soul. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those who are struggling to make decisions for the larger community in our schools, in our churches, in our businesses, in any place where we gather together. For those who we know that are struggling in this very moment, we lift them up to you by name. Holy God, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbor's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. 
in the name of the one who called us by name and taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In our series, The Walk, over the past month, our pastoral staff has invited you to take on some holy habits that sustain us as Christians. We've talked about worship and prayer, studying the scriptures and serving others. Today, Pastor Julia will talk to us about the holy habit of witnessing to God's love. And right in the middle of our series, we talked about giving. Generosity is one of the marks of a Christian. And we invite you to give to your church regularly and to also give five more ways to people and causes each month without expecting anything in return. At this time in the service, we invite you to share with the, with the church a percentage of what God has enabled you to receive. You can mail a check into Post Office Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, 28480. Or you can give right now through the Wrightsville UMC app, or you can go to our website, which is rightsvilleumc.org. We thank you for your support of the ministries of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, thank you that you are the light of the world, guiding our steps on your path. Your word says that the earth is yours and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to you. We recognize that everything we have belongs to you. We acknowledge our very lives belong to you. We now offer back to you a portion of what you have given us. May you prepare our journey. May your Son guide our steps. And may the Holy Spirit watch over us on every path we take. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. today's children's sermon. So I've got a word for you. It's kind of a big word and I don't feel like we hear it often. The word is ambassador. Can you say that? Ambassador. Now what does ambassador mean? Well, the definition from the dictionary says it's someone chosen to speak or act for an important person or countries. So we have ambassadors 
from our country that go and they're an ambassador to France or Spain or other countries in the world and their job is to represent us, our entire country of the United States of America to those other countries. So they're like a representative to show how wonderful the United States are. So the reason we're talking about ambassadors is because there's a verse from today's scripture lesson that talks about how we're ambassadors for Christ. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. So Ambassador Bob was a ministering dude. He could carry his Bible everywhere and tell people about Jesus. He was never without a handy gospel tract to give out at all times. It was very common to see Ambassador Bob at the park telling people about the love of Jesus and the salvation offered through Jesus. Ambassador Bob was ready and willing to go anywhere that the Lord would call him to go, even if it were another country. Ambassador Bob was on a mission to tell people about Jesus. He was truly a fisher of men. God used Ambassador Bob as an ambassador to bring people to himself. Is Ambassador Bob any different than you or me? Do I need to be in a special club to be an ambassador for Christ? Do we have to memorize a special verse or be a Christian for years and years and years first? No way! That's the appropriate answer. When we receive Jesus and we know him in our hearts, we too can be an ambassador for God and for the whole world. God tells us to go out and share, the world, share with the world about his love and salvation that he provides through his son, Jesus. The Bible says that we are all to be ambassadors for Jesus. An ambassador has the job of representing one country to another. The United States has ambassadors living in other countries, and their job is to represent our country to the people in those other countries. We are now members of God's kingdom in Jesus. So it's our job to represent God's kingdom as ambassadors to the people of the world. We represent Jesus and his heart towards the world. So we need to do a good job of representing him. What a great privilege it is to be heaven's ambassadors to the, to the rest of the world. So you can be Ambassador Billy, Ambassador Jennifer, or Ambassador Bob. You can be ambassador whoever you are. So as you move forward this week, everyone, I challenge you to think about how you can be an ambassador for Christ. How can you show God's love and what it means to know Jesus to other people? Can you lend a helping hand to a neighbor or someone in need? Can you be a friend to someone who might be new or lonely? Can you give somebody a hug or a high five or just wave hello in the grocery store or at the playground? There are so many ways to show God's love to all the people around the world. So I challenge you to be ambassador for Christ. Good morning. My name is Pastor Julia and I am one of the associate pastors here. We're going to be reading today from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 through 20. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Becoming an ambassador for the United States of America is no easy task. Of course, you'll have to start with a bachelor's degree, hopefully from an elite university, 
probably majoring in something like political science or international relations. Then you'll need to get a graduate degree, hopefully a PhD in a relative uh, subject. And after that, you're going to need to take an extensive written test, have plenty of fantastic internships, and once you are in public service, wait an average of 27 years before being appointed by the president to become one of the United States' 189 ambassadors. Of course, it makes sense for ambassadors to have such strict guidelines for their training because it's an incredibly important role. Ambassadors have to go to other countries and are responsible for navigating international conflicts, for navigating peace times and war times. It's a very important job. But compared to what Paul tells us our job is today, the U.S. ambassadors have it easy. You see, Paul tells us in our scripture today that we are ambassadors for Christ, which means that we are citizens of the kingdom of God, and we are representing God and God's kingdom to a foreign world. The two parties that need to be reconciled are not simply two countries having a conflict, but God and God's world. It could not be a more intimidating task. And yet, it is the task that we're called to. And it's true that we are living as church members in a foreign world. There's a rapidly growing percentage of people in the United States who don't identify themselves as Christians. You probably know that already. Church going is becoming less of a cultural obligation and more of something that people do because they genuinely love Jesus and want to follow him more closely. Honestly, that might not be a bad thing. There's something that's more scary to me though, and that's that Christians often have a bad reputation among those people who don't go to church. A study conducted by the Barna Group asked people who are not regularly attending churchgoers if they felt that Christianity made a positive impact on American society and asked them in what way they thought that impact was made. And get this, 49% of the people in that group, those who do not go to church, couldn't think of a single way that church benefited society. 49% of people who don't go to church couldn't think of a single way that the church had a good impact on our society. Now, I've been working with the Wrightsville Outreach Committee, and I know that that is simply not true. Our church and the wider church in general is doing amazing things to help those in need. But somehow, that's not the message that's getting out there. Here's another staggering statistic. When the Barna Group asked young people who don't go to church what first came to mind when they thought about Christians, 91% said anti-homosexual. For 91% of young people who don't go to church, that was the first thing that they thought of. Now, regardless of what stance you take on gay marriage, certainly that is not the main thing that we're supposed to be about. The church is in the midst of a massive PR crisis. And if we want to change the image non-churchgoers have of us, it has to start with us. When I was in middle school, my dreams came true when I made the Hastings Middle School cheerleading squad. I have a lot of fun memories from that time, but what will stay with me forever is what happened on the first day of practice as a team. Before we so much as touched a pom-pom or learned a single chant, our coach sat us all down in a circle. 
She looked us in the eyes and said, you are now Hastings Middle School cheerleaders. Whether you are wearing your uniform or not, you are always representing our school and this team. There are mothers out there whose daughters did not make this squad who are going to be watching you wherever you go. Starbucks, the grocery store, the hallways, looking for a reason why you shouldn't have this spot. And there are little girls who are looking up to you, watching how you behave and copying you. As a Hastings cheerleader, you have a responsibility to hold yourself with grace and integrity. Oh, man, I took that conversation incredibly seriously. I started imagining all the time that I was wearing my uniform and I would ask myself whether my behavior was fitting for a Hastings cheerleader. My role as a cheerleader mattered a lot to me, but my role as a Christian matters a whole lot more. I wonder what would happen if we lived every day like we are wearing our Christian uniforms. The reality is that as less people in our country are Christians, our witness matters more and more. We might be the only experience someone has of the church. If your life is the only information someone had about Christianity, what would they learn? We have the opportunity to help redefine what people think of when they think of the church. Of course, we're not perfect. We're Christians not because we have it all together, but because we recognize ourselves as deeply in need of God's saving grace. Witnessing doesn't mean that you have to be happy all the time or have a picture-perfect family or never get it wrong. No! The same Apostle Paul who tells us that we are Christ's ambassadors also tells us that the gospel is best expressed in weakness. Our witness is that when we are weak, then we are strong because of the power of God at work in us. Our task is to live in a way that shares this grace with others. Living grace-filled lives of integrity is critical if we want to share the gospel. Our actions are absolutely essential. Maybe you've heard that popular quote, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. If you're anything like me, maybe you've used this nice quote as an excuse to never really talk about your faith. Of course, when you're a pastor, it's a little harder not to talk about faith since just about every small talk conversation includes, so what do you do? There's no doubt that talking about faith can feel intimidating. After all, what if you say the wrong thing? What if someone asks you a question you can't answer? What if you offend someone? There's good reason to be a little nervous because our faith is the most important thing in our lives. It can feel a lot easier just to try to do a lot of good works and hope that people will, you know, sort of get the idea. But when we use actions only, we're missing out on a critical tool in our toolbox. If you've ever played charades, you know that it is in fact possible to communicate without words. The whole point of the game is the fun challenge of using your actions only instead of just saying whatever it is you're thinking of. But you also know it leads to a lot of misunderstandings. People don't always get that our actions mean what we mean for them to mean. Entire family game nights have been ruined because someone, in, someone didn't understand that this meant bumblebee and not bird. Friends, we don't have to play gospel charades. It's not that we have to use words. It's that we get to use words. If using words to tell someone about faith feels overwhelming, 
here's something you can try. Pretend you're sharing your faith with a friend. What would you want to say? Try writing it down on paper or maybe practice sharing with a friend or a family member. Here's some questions you might think about. Why is your life different because you know Jesus? Why do you go to church? One of the great things about trying this is that not only does it prepare you to share with someone else, but it strengthens your own faith as well. Stopping to put words to what we believe and why we believe it can bring us renewed clarity and purpose. Getting to use our words to share our faith is a gift. And I promise you, when you build relationships of trust and integrity, God will show you the opportunities for words. All you have to do is open your mouth when God tells you that it's time. I know because that's how it happened for me. When I was in high school, I was a passionate Christian, but I was not always the most sensitive or tactful. I had met Jesus and I wanted everyone I met to know Jesus too. Well, right before my best friends and I left for college, we had one last get together. I was talking to my friend, Caitlin. Caitlin wasn't raised going to church and as best I knew, she was agnostic. A few years earlier, she had come out as gay, and now she had a girlfriend she was crazy about. Well, this night, Caitlin started asking me about Christianity. It probably started because she knew I was going to a Christian school and that I wanted to be a pastor. At first, the conversation was mostly intellectual. Caitlin is curious and caring. So she was mainly asking about how I would become a pastor and what church was like. But then the conversation shifted. I could see the change in her face as this shifted from a head conversation to a heart conversation. She looked at me and she said, Julia, do you believe God loves me? The question stopped me in my tracks. As a prepared teen evangelist, I had felt ready to lay before Caitlin the orderly principles of the Christian faith and to ask her to believe them too. I was armed with apologetic skills to prove that the resurrection happened. I could quote the Romans road backwards and forwards. But when we finally had a spiritual conversation, Caitlin didn't care about any of that. All she wanted to know was, does God love me? The reality is that because Caitlin didn't grow up around the church, her main experience of Christians was what she saw in pop culture and on the news. This conversation happened when the Westboro Baptist Church was often on TV protesting and holding up signs that literally said God hates gay people. Now, Caitlin didn't ask me what I believed about being gay. She didn't ask me whether my church would marry a gay couple. And to be honest, at that time, I was wrestling a lot with those questions. But all she wanted to know was, Julia, does God love me? And I knew the answer to that question deep in my bones, without a doubt in my mind. Yes, of course God loves you. You are God's precious child. Jesus is crazy about you. Friends, our world is filled with Caitlin's. People who only know about Christianity and the church, what they see on the news, and it's not usually a very flattering picture. But scripture tells us that we are Christ's ambassadors in the world. We have the opportunity to be the light in the world, to share the good news of Jesus and to invite people into discipleship. But in order to do that, we have to speak up. 
we have to be willing to take a risk and put words to the work that we're doing in our communities. We have to be ambassadors who leave the embassy and go out into the world. Through our study of the walk, we have been challenged to commit to practices that strengthen our Christian life. And we've been using our five fingers to remind us of these practices. This week, here's your new invitation. This year, share your faith with five people and use your words. I'm telling you, if you become willing and stay tuned in to God's voice, God will give you opportunities to share. And second, invite five people to come to church. This is actually a really cool time in the life of the church to invite new friends because we have new ways to experience worship. If you're continuing to worship with us here on our online campus, why not invite a friend to watch too? Going to church for the first time in a while or the first time ever might feel a lot less intimidating if you can go in your pajamas. And inviting someone could be as simple as sharing the link to online worship on your Facebook page. Or what about getting a group together for a virtual watch party? Worshiping online is just as real as worshiping in person. So there's no reason why you can't witness to your faith and invite other people online as well. And if you've been wor worshiping in person, then the next time that we gather here in this space, I want you to take a look around. Look to your left and to your right and ask yourself, who's missing? Who isn't here that you want to see here? Maybe there's someone that you used to sit by that you haven't seen in a while. Why don't you give them a call or shoot them a text? Invite them to come back to church with you. Maybe even see if they want to go for lunch afterwards. Whether you are worshiping online or in person, I challenge you to take a look around your life and dream big. If you could see anyone in these pews or worshiping online, who would it be? How about your friend from the Rotary Club, the woman that you play tennis with, the barista at your favorite coffee shop? Ask God to open your eyes to the people around you that you could invite. Who doesn't have a place where they truly belong? Who hasn't heard that God loves them? Friends, we are Christ ambassadors, and God wants to use us to reach out to the world with the message of God's love. So let's get out there and let's get to work. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you that you have reconciled us to yourself and that you have entrusted the ministry of reconciliation to us. Strengthen us to go into the world as your ambassadors. Let us live grace-filled lives of integrity. Help us to build relationships of trust with your children. And when the time is right, give us the words we need to share your love. We thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh
Okay, so you've received your assignment, your challenge for the topic of sharing. You're going to invite five people to come to church, whether that be online or in person, and I'm going to challenge you to share your faith with five people this year. We can do this. And now as you go, may the Spirit of the living God, made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord, Go before you to show you the way. Go behind you to push you into places you might not go on your own. Go above you to watch over you and protect you. Go beneath you to lift you up when you cannot stand. Go beside you to be your companion and dwell within you to remind you every day that you are not alone and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. Go in peace.